Welcome back, everybody. What's up, Valley? Welcome, News Crews. Thanks. Let's Shall jump right in, right in because we've been talking about this, been speculating about this, but it's looking like it's true is that Sony is planning a PlayStation 5 event, and it might actually be June 3rd. The PlayStation 5 is just months away from its holiday 2020 launch, but we still don't know everything about the device. That's going to change soon. Sony is planning a PS5 event for June 3rd, according to sources familiar with the company's plans. Bloomberg is separately corroborating that date. And it is important to note that this is only the current plan. The company is trying to lock down its promotional efforts for the PlayStation 5, but it also knows it must remain flexible during the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. While the June 3rd reveal should provide the best look yet at the PlayStation 5, don't expect Sony to give away every detail about its next-gen system. The company could withhold price and release timing for another date. The price for the PS5 is still especially subject to fluctuations. Sony wants to launch at a competitive price tag, but it also doesn't want to take a loss on hardware. And Sony also doesn't need to go too deep on any games it may show on June 3rd. Uh, The company is planning follow-up events. This includes a state of play that will focus on both next and current gen games. That state of play has a tentative schedule of early August. Again, this could shift dramatically depending on a number of factors. So then what will Sony show off next week? Expect it to focus on what is possible in next-gen games with the PlayStation 5. The company seems aware of the backlash that Microsoft faced for its Xbox 2020 event, and fans were unhappy with the lack of gameplay at that presentation. So in response, Sony wants to rely on PS5 games that are actually running on real hardware. June 3rd is next week. What do we think about this possible PlayStation 5 stream that's right around the corner? I am super excited for it. I'm also wondering exactly how much they're going to show if they haven't decided on a price point and if this isn't the actual reveal of all their games because they're doing that at a separate event. So I hope we can maybe see the console. I hope we can see even more of the gameplay, but I feel like the tech demo that was released for the Unreal Engine 5 is already impressive enough that I don't know what they're going to bring to the table that's going to wow me even more. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you there. I think the tech demo really put the PlayStation 5 on the map of everyone's radar to, to, to see. I hope this is true. I think uh, Sony is in that position where everyone is just waiting to see the, the system in action. Hopefully, like you said, to actually see the system. But something I would love is if next week, we finally get to see what the controller is like and what yes. the sound is like along with some of these games that are launching uh, with the PlayStation 5 this year. I'm really excited for the controller as well. I hope that they showcase more of it, maybe the whole thing. Maybe we'll actually see the features, You know, if there is going to be a screen on it, um, what the haptics feels like, or at least if I could hear someone describing what the haptics feels like because everything still will be online and digital. Um, I'm excited to hopefully after this event, you know, see the games that are going to be coming out for the PlayStation 5 and a whole review of that. But I am glad that we're at least getting more information on the PS5 because they have definitely taken their time um, to reveal that. They they have. And, and, you know, I think we've understood that Sony recognizes the power position that they're in right now. They could push back a week, two weeks, and people would still come in the masses to see what the PlayStation 5 has to offer. Because I think it's a general consensus that the PlayStation 5 is the next-gen hardware of the future. And at least from the, the uh, what are those called? The, the, the accessories uh, that complement the hardware in the system yeah. also just make the, the, the experience more immersive. So I think this is very, you know, very important that we show the true immersion of the PlayStation 5, even if we don't see the console or anything else, but we actually get to know what it'll be like when we're playing it ourselves. I think so too. The PS5 is a whole experience. There's all these parts. There's a haptic controller. There's a sound that comes with it. There's an actual console. Um, If they are maybe going to demo PSVR with this, I don't think they will, but maybe they could even show um, that in some way. Um, It's not just the PS5 that's the exciting part. It's all the software around it. It's all the accessories around it, as you said. Yeah, and, and that's where I think all of us are kind of sitting right now is, is okay, June 3rd hits. What are we seeing? What are they showing? And, and I do hope it is actual gameplay and not cinematics. They, they just 
I don't, they just can't make that mistake that Microsoft made. If, if anything, they, they should know that. And I really, I want to believe that they do. Same. What's up, Kringle? I think, what's up, Kringle? Xbox hasn't really played its cards right. And I think Sony is really trying to learn from those mistakes. And I'm kind of surprised that Sony is taking it so slow in that they're just waiting for Xbox to do its thing. And they're just like, oh, we're just going to do all the right things you did and none of the wrong things. I feel like is feels unfair, but I mean, that's definitely a strategy. Yeah, it is. And and that's where it's kind of like the, at least a lot of these, you know, reporters are pushing the the narrative that like, do not expect to hear anything about price. Don't expect to maybe even see the console, but that this would really just be a moment of showcasing games and gameplay. So that's I'm 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 printing my mind there, but I would, you know, my, there's a there's that dream that we'll actually see the PS5, you know, or we'll actually, you know, get a quote on price and and Gringle it's supposed to be and it's actually slated to come out holiday 2020. So this year PlayStation 5 will be coming out. Moving on to our next topic, Blizzard announces the cancellation of BlizzCon 2020. So this feels kind of late to the party, but I think when the uh, the first moments of cancellations were happening, Blizzard and BlizzCon was kind of like, oh, we don't know yet. We'll make a decision later on. Boom, now we're here. So BlizzCon 2020 has officially been canceled. In a blog post Tuesday from BlizzCon executive producer Sarah Lynn Smith, it was announced that the popular annual event that typically occurs in late October, early November, and celebrates past, present, and future Blizzard games and a culture with multiple competitions and activations has been shelved. And the decision was made in light of the uncertainty of holding a convention given evolving health and safety guidelines due to the ongoing coronavirus pandemic. However, it was noted in the post that some form of online event or presence that might be able to channel the BlizzCon spirit and connect with you is in the works with a preliminary timeline of early next year. And as for esports at BlizzCon, the post noted that the BlizzCon team is looking for alternatives for the events that would normally take place at the show. In 2019, for example, the Overwatch World Cup, Hearthstone Global Finals, and StarCraft II World Championship Series Global Finals were three competitions that took place at BlizzCon. BlizzCon is one of a slew of major gaming events and competitions that have been canceled or modified this year. The Evolution Championship Series announced that it would be an online-only competition this year, while E3 canceled its yearly convention. Do you think BlizzCon, arguably being the biggest quote-unquote fan event of the year, is this a bigger blow than no E3? I think this was to be expected. I don't know if I would say a bigger, as big a blow as E3, but I think for the fans, BlizzCon really does mean a lot. E3 is more of just gaming announcements, I guess, while BlizzCon is a whole experience. And there are these, you know, huge tournaments there, the Overwatch World Cup and Global Finals and World Championship Series. Like, this is a, an extraordinary event for Blizzard fans. Um, I love the clip that was pulled up with the Diablo announcements that the everyone blues. was so disappointed with. The reaction is just, you can see it on their face, like, this wasn't what they expected. What? Really? <laughs> Yeah. And I think that wasn't a good moment for BlizzCon in general, but BlizzCon's really exciting. I know a lot of people who go. I personally have not been yet, but you know, fans of of any Blizzard game or even who knows of Blizzard games, I feel like this is a gaming event to go to to experience, you know, all the fun around games that there is. Yeah. I I think the the core of Blizzard's community is the fans that you know, grew up with the foundation of Blizzard itself before it became Activision Blizzard. I think a lot of what the public uh, perception of Blizzard and maybe BlizzCon shifted and skewed when Activision and them merged. And then obviously just kind of like the, the overall essence of Blizzard seemed to shift to more of a place of only the numbers and less about the community and what the, the the fans wanted. So I think there's that sense among the fans that they just want Blizzard to kind of like right those wrongs that we know they've gone through in the past couple of years. Do you think that they have righted some of those wrongs or do you think they're still in the process of it? Because I remember there was a big, there's big political news where that Hong Kong player in, I think it was a Hearthstone tournament, yep. um, was silenced and removed from the tournament. And that was a big point of contention. Do you think Blizzard has... Right at those, or do you think people have just forgotten about them, or do you think people still hold a grudge? 
I, I don't I don't think anybody's forgotten about it. And I do I would say the grudge is still there, but kind of like that hope that they'll do better. It's like if you had a family member that you really loved, but they just couldn't get this get rid <laughs> they of this like can't get it right bad habit, or they're just you know, for whatever reason, not wanting to better themselves. Uh, I think it's that because originally, um, you know, when you have walkouts actually happen at Blizzard from some of the original employees and the people who've been there for the longest, that speaks to the kind of people that have been with Blizzard and and the way they feel about what Blizzard was initially and what it is now. So Mm -hmm. I would say the grudge is definitely still there, but that deep hope that it'll, it'll shift back to the original way of things. I will say that I'm really glad that they canceled this event. I mean, I kind of assume all conventions for the rest of the year are going to be canceled, but it's still nice to see this officially canceled. Um, I, personally, I think it's kind of a no-brainer, but you I'm sure everyone's been hearing on the news about protests or about places opening up or you know opening up economies and, and opening up public spaces and public events. So it is nice to see that Blizzard does care for the safety of its fans and this event isn't worth the risk of putting it on. Um, I'm kind of maybe a little surprised, maybe not, that they're not really doing an online event, but might do one um, at the beginning of next year. Um, I believe that has something to do with the spirit of Blizzard. I feel like it might be something on the back burner that's like, if we can do it well, sure, but there's not really any pressure for them to actually put something on in place of BlizzCon. For sure. And I, I needed to look it up real quick because I remember what a lot of people were saying is, is outside of Blizzard HQ, there are plaques on the ground. And one of them is Every Voice Matters, uh, alongside dedicated to, to creating the most epic entertainment experiences ever. And then you go on and you see Every Voice Matters. So the only way to get the most epic entertainment experience is that Every Voice Matters. And when you shift that aspect of your you know, your MO and it no longer feels like that's the case anymore. You know, if I was someone who grew up with Blizzard and understood that foundation and realized that foundation isn't present anymore, I would be crying out for that to come back because I think that is necessary in in all businesses and and, and art forms that every voice does matter and it should be that way. I feel like my perception of Blizzard has kind of mellowed out. I remember the whole hashtag boycott Blizzard um, thing happened. um, And it seems like now they're kind of staying out of the spotlight and they're like, we're just going to have our games out and we're just going to focus on our games here for maybe a year and kind of not really, you know, be too public facing for better or for worse. Um, I hope that they do, you know, have better public perception and really go back to the, their roots and the, their MO and what is on those plaques. Yeah, and that's a good question, Maddie. I, I, I wonder that as well, too, because we know that the player base in terms of Overwatch, though it still seems strong, pro players are leaving. Uh, there's a sense there that it appears on the outside looking in that, that, that they're not really listening to their community, especially their pro players are not having as much of a voice uh, as as we all probably agree that they should. Um, so yeah, what is going to happen for Overwatch 2? You know, what's going to happen for Diablo 4? You know, there's just a lot up in the air that can they turn the ship around and go back in the direction that everyone truly resonated with? I think that might be a question we'll be wondering for a while. Overwatch is not in a great state, especially Um, Overwatch League is not in a good position with Sinatra leaving, with other players considering going to Valorant without being able to travel in order to do home and away games, which was something new and exciting that Overwatch League did. And then they totally shot themselves in the foot by accident, you know, because no one can travel really currently. Um, So I hope it doesn't mean that Blizzard's going to take too much of a blow, but this does, at least to me, seem kind of like a time for them to step back and really reconsider what the next step they're going to take is. Absolutely. Well, this next story, uh, you know, I'll I'll read the headline because uh, I have a very strong opinion here. So I'll let you take it away as Call of Duty Warzone's terrific new mode is already gone already so i'm gonna give you the hard-hitting news and marone will give you all his thoughts which he has a lot of them as you can see 
So Warzone just lost one of its best limited time modes. The May 26 playlist update axed Call of Duty's classic Battle Royale experience a mere three days after its debut. The limited time trios mode was called BR Classic and was just added to Warzone on Friday. BR Classic catered to players looking for more of a PUBG feel. It stripped away all of Warzone's biggest features, allowing for less fuss and more satisfying wins. Since launch, Warzone has been a distinct battle royale experience meant to maintain the arcade flow of Call of Duty. The inventory system and healing process are both simplified in comparison to the competition, and every element seems designed to keep you in the action. However, Warzone's simplification of Battle Royale mechanics still comes with all the bells and whistles of Call of Duty's fast-paced style and chaotic killstreaks. Warzone also carries the danger of respawning enemies who are often looking to drop down on you for a revenge kill. Anyone can return from death, even if their teammates have enough cash to buy them back. Clearly, a lot of people like that approach. With just over two months under its belt, Call of Duty's free-to-play Warzone stands as a strong Battle Royale contender. Over 60 million players have dropped into the crossplay fight. The recently departed Classic Mode stripped away a lot of the chaos by removing Warzone's cash system, contracts, and the buy station feature, meaning killstreaks weren't available and you couldn't buy custom loadouts nor pay to revive a dead squad mate. The Gulag, a place meant for the second chances, was closed, so everyone had to make the most of their one life in true Battle Royale fashion. Cutting out the custom gun loadouts and perks added greater balance to Warzone. Everyone started out armed with nothing but their fists, and the only weapons were scavenged off the ground or from loot caches. Every player was at the mercy of the RNG gods. This really cut back on the number of snipers camping on the rooftops with thermal scopes. Yes, you could still get sniped by enemies on the rooftops of the downtown area and some guns had thermal scopes, but that situation was much less common. There's been a lot of hype around Warzone Bunker Easter eggs, so I don't think that BR Classic received the attention it deserved. And unfortunately, it was just a limited time mode and so limited it was only three days long. The developers are doing a great job keeping the playlist fresh for both Modern Warfare and Warzone seasons of content, but it means you never know how long your favorite new mode will last. Whether it's solos, duos, trios, or squads, I hope that at some point we'll see a return of this classic style Warzone. Marone, what are you thinking about this news? Okay, so just needed to take some breaths, needed to <laughs> soak it up. You know, uh, Maddie pointed out this is gameplay from one of the sessions um, that I had. And this is probably, this session was probably why I love this mode so much is I, I think one of the things that's significant about battle royales and the experiences that come with playing a battle royale uh, for anyone who's played them is the, once you get rid of an opposing force, you don't have to worry about that individual again. And with the, gulag and the buyback system that's never the case uh and and that's something that i think some people enjoy and they're like oh i want to be able to respawn but then it's like yeah but that's not you know that's not a battle royale you're you lost you're out go start again <laughs> that's that's how it is and then the loadouts like right now i'm running the meta with a growl if i have a growl i'm going to do pretty well i'm going to hold it down and probably make it to final circle and mostly everybody else is using that same gun as well. In this mode, that's not the case. Like, everyone's on an even playing field. And why people didn't like that, or at least maybe the vocal minority was just so upset by not having their respawn, or, or for whatever reason, they were just so salty, and their sodium levels were so high, they couldn't handle not making it past maybe the 20th person in the match. This requires you to play differently. Like, you have to think differently. You have to hopefully find the better loot to make you better uh, or to make you actually last and and the heartbeat sensors and the thermals like loot mattered and finding it had a had a significance to your play and you couldn't stay in one area for too long because if you just didn't have the right loadout or the, just to find the right weapons you needed to go find them or someone was gonna you know outplay you I, I just I don't <laughs> know why they would let it even stay in for only three days like every time I jumped into a lobby, it filled up. I don't understand that. It just made no sense to me. Do you think the people that didn't like this mode were just bad at it and didn't want yes, to do that? Yes, absolutely. I'm, I'm, this, this mode right here in this game, <laughs> I'm by myself. My teammate died in the beginning of this and I made it all the way through to the end. 
And, and this was something where I'm like, why wouldn't anybody like this? You actually can do that. Whereas if you're playing the normal mode, there's just no chance. If you're a solo in a trio or a solo in a quad game, you might as well just try to hang on for second place. Because unless you're a shroud or just one of these just amazing, like this, that guy didn't even know I was right there. <laughs> no, I don't know why, uh, but that was the situation in, in this lobby. It just, there's so much to the regular mode that just gives you the advantage as a player with your loadouts and with everything that you do. Uh, that this mode stripped away and was like, how technically skilled are you at the game? How good are you are out, out thinking the other team? I'm surprised that Warzone players really seem to like this because I was interested in only this and not actual Warzone because I was like, I don't like contracts. I don't like, you know, that everyone can respawn. You know, maybe I'm just boring. But it's interesting to hear that people who do play Warzone's normal mode did really want this. And do you think that this was removed just to see how much outcry there would be? Or do you think they actually thought that people didn't want this? I don't know. Sometimes it's like, what, what is Infinity War doing? Like, what, what choices are they making there? How, how, you know, how are these decisions made? Because I have zero idea about it. It's like, they'll put in modes there that I'm sure people are just like, why, well, why is this back? It's like, they have Shoot House and uh, what, uh, what's the Hard Hat or what's the other shipment 24-7. Mm -hmm. They have two of basically the same modes on the, pretty much the same map playing 24 seven and they got rid of this and they, they didn't even replace it with anything. I am shocked that it was only there for three days. I mean, I, we, we talked about it last week and then I kind of forgot about it. And then I was like, Oh, you know, maybe I should try this mode, but it's gone already. So. It's like, it's like they had the, the, uh, uh, they had the one mode prior to this one. Uh, and it was kind of similar with the, with the no buybacks and solos or whatever. And, uh, People liked it, and it stayed so much longer. I, I just, where it felt, it, 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 there was no sense that they actually cared about what anybody thought. They were just like, here's a limited time event, and we're just taking away because we do what we want. That's what we do here. We do what we want. And it's like, I feel like it takes like a full day to download Warzone and Modern Warfare. So do I always yeah. make this on my PC just in case a game mode comes up that's going to disappear? Also, these, I, I just understand, if you're going to play a normal BR trios or quads and you're also, you're on a team that's going to last you're going to be playing for quite some time because some of these some of these games if you're playing with the right teammates can last like an hour for just one game that's Classic so long did not have that case i mean you were down to 25 teams like within 10 minutes there was just you would just watch that number go from 150 to 60 within the first 10 minutes cuz people are just wiping each other out and then it just becomes this this strategy of of continuing to find better loot hope you find a heartbeat sensor and hope you find a thermal or, or a night vision because if you don't and also the firefights felt so much more real because people were like oh it if mattered. i if i die like I'm, I'm i'm done so i can't be like just run and gun and jump in dolphin right. diving and shooting um did you notice a lot of cheaters when you were playing this game mode actually no which was wow. really interesting i I think there was maybe one session where someone I was like, are they using an aim bot? But not as much as it still kind of is. Every now and then it pops up when still playing that you're just like, oh, this person suspiciously knew where I was without <laughs> me being aware of an advanced UAV or how are, I don't know how they found me. Yeah, this mode didn't seem to have that many. I wonder when they're going to bring this back, if they're going to bring this back. Yeah. I feel like they... You know, they created this whole game mode and announced it and it was exciting. And then all yeah. of a sudden they're like, oh, just, just kidding. We did a lot of work, but we're not going to let you, you know, enjoy this. Yeah, I hope they I, do. I, I feel like people want more modes. Yeah, I would hope that people would be into the idea of an even playing field. Because like, for example, if your growl's not leveled up and you can't currently play the meta, then you, you don't have, there's not really a blueprint there that, that paints the picture of what your growl should be to be, a, a, you know, having the top tier weapon uh in in the game mode so br classic trios basically allowed that to be non-existent where it was just like you better find yourself uh, a, a a damn good weapon and and just actually be good at the game otherwise you can't rely on your loadout anymore k guardians is i hope we all stir up enough fuzz for them <laughs> to bring it back 
I did it. tweet that that article from Kotaku and tagged Call of Duty, Activision, <laughs> and Infinity Ward in it because I was just like, you guys, you guys messed up. Yeah, let let them know. I mean, the weapons part is is part of why I like Fortnite or I wanted to like this classic mode versus normal Warzone where you have the loadouts because if yeah. I'm pretty new to Call of Duty, I'm like. I could have a loadout, but like, I don't know what weapons I like the most. Whereas yeah. in Fortnite is kind of just like, try your best. And like, yes. sometimes I might actually be like really good with a gray pistol or something stupid. Like, you know, sometimes chance does work out in your favor. And I feel yes. like with loadouts, I was constantly like, I don't know what all these items are. And like, people are always respawning. And it's like, you have to fight the same battle. Like how many times, I mean, in the Warzone weekend tournament, there were how many is like over a hundred like 128 kills when there were only 48 players because people just kept coming back to life. Yeah. And that's, that's the other thing too, is like all, I mean, the, the simple fact that you can just run those contracts, like you were saying that you weren't a big fan of and just continue to buy your teammates back. I mean, some people, if you're solo in a quads or a trios, you could successfully buy all of your teammates back if you find enough money or whatever, and you, and you get them back in there. But this isn't the case here. I mean, that was just it. Like, like Delta, who I was playing with in that in that one clip, once he went down, that was it. And he just basically sat there and tried to watch the map and assist me, you know, as a teammate would. And, and there were times where you play with like randoms and you could tell they were just salty and they would just quit out, not even try to get the XP. They wouldn't even like believe in hanging around with the teammate. Oh, no. Uh, you know, it, it just the the saltiness was was very apparent. And something you said that I thought was really cool was there were certain guns that I started to use in this mode that I didn't realize I actually enjoyed using nice. because it was the only gun I could use at the time to defend myself. Right, and you just have to deal with it. Yep, otherwise I mean, you're screwed. The saltiness was real, Marone. Yeah, it, it was. I really hope this mode comes back. If anything, I believe this this mode is necessary because this is a battle royale. And the, this classic mode is an homage to what battle royales were always known to be, which wasn't a respawn city of doing your contracts and, and your you know, friends buying you back. It was, if you're out, you're out. And that's it. Also, I feel bad for this YouTuber who made a video that we're playing right now, nine tips to help you win in Warzone BR Classic. And those tips don't matter anymore. <laughs> sorry, no, sorry, Expel. Oh, we're playing your, your video right now, but your videos are relevant. Yeah. And, and some might think like, oh, well, if you get a heartbeat sensor, you know, that's OP, which it is, but they're very hard to find. Like in normal mode, you can find heartbeat sensors pretty much everywhere and you, your loadout, you can come with one as well. But these are actually really hard to find in this mode. And it required you to sometimes venture into where you would know enemy territory would be to potentially find one just because you, it, it worked. And if you had it, it, it was, it was an advantage that you were looking for. Right, there's some risk and reward there. Kyle Mighty says, yeah, not respawn should be real battle royale. I feel like this should maybe even be like a semi-permanent game mode because I already feel that like redeploy in, in Warzone is, I guess, spammy. I'm like yeah. so not used to it being like a real thing. Like in Fortnite, it's only in like super fun game modes you can redeploy. And here it's just like, yeah, just redeploy whenever, you know, go on the roofs, like your health regenerates, like you yep. respawn. Like, what is this? It's fun, yeah. but it's not really a battle royale. That, that's the other thing, too. It's 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 Call of Duty's version of a battle royale. Because I think I think there's a large majority of Call of Duty players who are between the ages of 13 and 17. And these individuals, I remember once, and I think I might have clipped it, where killed this enemy player, and I heard this high-pitched scream. Like, <laughs> When I just tell you that you hear you hear the voice after they die. Yeah. I mean, it was a child screaming on the other end of that mic because they died. And and that's the audience that I think, you know, Activision is is looking for <laughs> uh in, in this regard. So they want their respawn or whatever. But in this case, he couldn't he couldn't come back. And I think that was that moment for him of realization, which I think for a lot of like older players and maybe people who just enjoy more hardcore shooters this mode favored them because this is the kind of like, I did the arcade thing for enough time. I'm, I'm down for the more hardcore experience. Right. I'm, I'm good now. I can play this for, for real now. I've, I've told this story before in my stream, but my friend was, was playing Warzone, I believe. And uh, his, his teammate was like, Oh, could you pass me the sniper? 
and they were like oh what accent is that like sniper but it turned out it was just like a little kid who like couldn't say the word sniper because his like mouth wasn't developed enough yet and like that's the audience what are you doing yourself. playing this game <laughs> yeah that's exactly right why are you allowed to play this game right now <laughs> yeah i'm with you there that's true so please anyone from <laughs> Activision from Infinity Ward, Call of Duty, if you can, bring this mode back or at least bring a realism mode in there if you want to drop in loadouts and things like that. Just bring back the core Battle Royale experience that I think anyone who grew to love Battle Royales from PUBG and H1Z1 and Fortnite understand, like you know, others were saying in the chat and like we understand it to be, is if you lose, you're out and that's the way it goes. I have a suggestion that I think might appeal to both Infinity Ward and Umarone. There's a there's a little known mode, or actually has a little bit of a a, a, a track record uh, of of appealing to fans in in modern warfare called gunfight, which is what the gulag is based on. Right, it's that one v one. They added a one v. It's called like I think just called gunfight. I don't I actually don't know what it's called, but you basically you you queue in with a random gun, and so maybe they yeah. can have they can have a addition a little bit of an evolution of a br classic, but you basically, you basically jump in with a random gun, but it, everyone else has the same gun kind of a thing at the at the get-go so maybe they yeah. can because i think i think at the end of the day they just want to like keep iterating and seeing what people like that's that's what they've done with with playlists with uh where they're multiplayer since october and there's a little bit of like you know like mcdonald's when they they bring back the mcrib but everyone's like for some reason yeah. likes the mcrib but then yeah. when it's gone <laughs> these things are great yeah this is great because those gone. i think they kind of treat the playlist a little bit like that so you're the you're yeah. right now you're the mcrib Rick, mcrib lover you're and like you're like bring guy. back the mcrib yeah Everyone and I played with liked this mode, though. We that's loved the part it. That kind of like that, that's yeah. the part that surprised uh, me. I, I I logged on to go play, and I was like, "What? It's fun." Uh, I yeah. wanted it to be a daily part of the rotation, at the very least, yeah. where it's like get a quad in just to have some fun, you know, some and then crazy calm it down and play play some play some some classic. Well, that, to me, that's COD. You you that's where you have playlists. You can jump into yeah. some some hard point. You can play some demolition. You can play some S and D. These are all within the same game, but they're different games. And yeah, to me, that's are, what Call of Duty is all about. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing is like that when you know you have one life, the, the whole play style is different. Right. There are a lot of people in the regular mode that you will see. You're super aggressive right now. This makes it, there's three people in this house. And right. one person's like, I got my gray M4. And those are yeah. one in there. And you're like, why are you playing so aggressively? This right. makes zero sense. Well, to, and to Kaiser's point, like that's what Fortnite's been doing really well <laughs> too. What are you just like that's me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. That's to, to, that's what Fortnite does well too, and it seems like they're trying to mimic is like just having different uh, uh, modes to appeal to different audiences. Um, and obviously, they appealed to the, the uh, a certain audience with with, cl- with the BR Classic, but then stripped it so quickly. So fast. Oh man. Three days. Too soon. Three days. I hope it's that you know season four drops next week. And they did the kind of like story up till now thing that posted today as well. I hope it's like, hey, you know, new map and new modes or whatever. And they maybe have, they update the UI where there's more because guys, there's no excuse for them not to have enough servers to house all these different modes. I mean, I think we're all in understanding that they have the resources to make this possible for every Warzone and Call of Duty player. They do, and they have no problem issuing another update. Crying face from K Guardian. I, I feel like they, you know, they have no reservations being like, yes, download an extra terabyte, like to get yeah. this game on there. Like, we got you. Hopefully, yeah. we'll see this come back, please. Please. We're moving on to a story that is not something I'm salty about and upset about. I'm actually very excited about this and I really, really hope we we get to see this co-op mode because I think this is the most exciting part of this is that Marvel's Avengers War have tabled their gameplay and co-op stream announced for June 2020. Square Enix and Crystal Dynamics announced that Marvel's Avengers will be getting its first War Table stream on June 24th that will showcase brand new gameplay and co-op footage. Marvel's Avengers Twitter also shared a video of the development team talking about how they are working through the COVID-19 pandemic challenges to, quote, finish what they started and deliver the games fans deserve. Let's, Let's check out that video. <laughs> Overnight, the world changed for everyone. We're working from home setups, kits, everything they need. But these new challenges have fueled our passion for the mission. 
our mission to fulfill our promise to you. Here we got her hand slamming against the wall. To finish what we started. Uh, it's about shot composition and to reassemble the Avengers. Up until this point, what we see of Kamala is... We're reminded every day how important it is to connect. Because whatever the mission, we can accomplish it together. Together, we are smarter. Resilient. Determined. Mighty. Brave. Unstoppable. Because we are stronger together. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I thought that was cool to see their like Zoom conference calls and stuff in the background. I was like, yeah, like work together. Yeah. Do it. I, I couldn't agree more. And I was also trying to pay attention to the videos that were actual gameplay. I was like, oh, what's that? Whole oh, game so oh, oh, what's happening there as well, too? I was like, what what gameplay do we do we have in there? <laughs> so this video did feature a few gl glimpses of gameplay and behind the scenes footage, the promises of new trailers, co-op gameplay and story missions. Additionally, the video ends with the release date of September 4th, 2020, meaning the game has not been delayed any further. Marvel's Avengers was revealed at E3 2019 and takes place five years after the Avengers were blamed for a tragedy that stuck that struck the San Francisco Bay Area. So I don't know about you, but is this something that you're excited for, the June 24th reveal? Maybe it'll be a kind of hype up like the Ghost of Tsushima state of play? Yeah, I, I, I hope so. I feel like Ghosts of Tsushima did a great job just being like, this is our game. You can take a look, like nothing secret. Like this is what our game is. And I hope that they do something similar with this, especially because it seems like there's a lot happening. There's all these different characters. There's all these different fights. You know, each character has their own ability. It seemed like you could, you know, have skins there. They didn't even talk about how you could design your own Avenger, I believe. Um, what about you? I'm hoping this is going to be big. Yeah, I... This is a game that when they first announced it, I was like, are you serious? And they showed a little bit of gameplay with Thor and they've shown off some more gameplay uh, and they showed off the that they were talking about there's co-op and then there's going to be the online mode where you create your own player. And I was like, whoa, they're really cranking in the resources into this game. It's not just one campaign offshoot. And then they were like, and it'll have RPG aspects where you'll find different things to upgrade your armor, your character. And I was just like, yes. Please, this is the Marvel superhero game I think any Marvel superhero fan has been waiting for. I think so too. It seems like this, even if you don't care about the Avengers, like this is a good game in and of itself. I love how strong the branding is with Scarlett Johansson and Robert Downey Jr. as these superheroes because when I oh, watch yeah. this and when a lot of people watch this, they're like, that's not, that's not quite right. Like that just throws me off that I'm like looking at, at what isn't Chris Hemsworth, I believe his name is. I always mix up all the Chris's. Um, right. And <laughs> all these people, it's like, I, I think they kind of need to like, I don't know if it's like rebrand this or somehow make me not expect mm. that every time Black Widow turns around, it won't be Scargo's face. Yeah, I, I get that. You know, I think it was for me that the case of just kind of always accepting iterations in comics had different looks. There, you know, we have, uh, you know, a plethora of comics where Nick Fury is a white male with short hair. And then we have <laughs> all the comics presently where Nick Fury is a bald headed black male. I mean, I'm just, there's so much in terms of comic book changing. Look, Logan's character has changed as, as uh, uh, Wolverine over different iterations. The same with Peter Parker, you know, the, even the same with Bruce Wayne. You, they're just, it's just something you kind of like embrace as a comic book fan. So I get what you're saying though, because so many people have just kind of like now grown up on the Marvel's movies being as prominent at, as they are. So that reaction kind of made me laugh <laughs> where I was like, man, people are really upset about the fact they don't look like the actors. They are. Thank you to you gaming. Says Chris Evans is Captain America. Chris Hemsworth is Thor. I feel like that's just going to further confuse me that they both look the same and they're both different superheroes. I'm gonna I'm gonna need a lot of help with this. Yeah, I'm I and and aside from that, maybe visual hang up. You know, the game itself could be amazing, and there's a lot here. And I, at least from what I remember reading, is like Disney's really behind this, and Marvel's really behind this. So they're pushing really hard to make sure that this game hits and lands well, and hopefully, it, it actually capitalizes on what I think. DC Universe Online kind of missed 
And maybe this June 24th reveal will be one of that. I, I hope so too. I hope they really show how fun this game is going to be. Tio Gaming says, I hope it's not like Marvel Heroes. Um, I feel like I initially was like, oh, are they just making this game to be like a, you know, just like something to appease Marvel fans or like just a moneymaker. But it seems like, you know, they actually put a lot of heart into this um, and, a, and a lot of time to actually make it, it look good. I really liked that trailer that we showed yeah. that showed the behind the scenes and also the people being clueless on Twitter being like, so is anything going to happen? But I was also a little confused where I was like, well, I didn't really see any of the game in there or it was so small that I couldn't actually get a look um, to at what it was. So hopefully um, June 24th, that will all be revealed. Absolutely. And speaking of another major intellectual property, a teaser has leaked suggesting that the Star Wars Battlefront 2 is going to be June's second PS Plus game. A leaked teaser suggests that Star Wars Battlefront 2 will be June's second PS Plus game. The short video, which was spotted on Instagram and posted to Twitter by Nebelian, shows a short clip of Star Wars Battlefront 2 and notes that the game will be, quote, available with PS Plus this month. So it was previously announced on Monday that PlayStation Plus subscribers would receive Call of Duty World War II as the first of June's free games, with more details to come later in the week. And this leak looks credible and suggests that PlayStation may officially re reveal June's full lineup soon. Star Wars Battlefront 2 has had something of a redemption arc following its controversial launch. IGN re-reviewed the game in 2019 after its initial 2017 launch and found it delivered an unrivaled force-fueled multiplayer fantasy. And then back in late April, Star Wars Battlefront 2 received its final regular content update in the form of the Battle of Scarif update which brought the iconic set piece from Rogue One into the game alongside updated the rise of Skywalker skins for the game's many heroes. What do we think about this possibly being a free PS Plus game for June? I think it's a strong choice. It's kind of like that last hurrah, get as many people in here as possible to have fun and, and really enjoy this. There was some information recently that seemed to allude that Battlefield 6 was about to be talked about here pretty soon. So this would make sense to me that, you know, EA is really trying to generate more content around their, you know, their Battlefront and Battlefield series, uh, even if it is free. So people, it's fresh in their mind and they see it. Because every time you log in, the PlayStation Plus is like right there for you, like saying, hey, get your free game now, so... Maddie says the PS Plus lineup this year is solid. And Kyle Mighty says, I wish I had more time to play games, frowny face. Don't we all to an extent? I feel like this has really come full circle because the only time I played Battlefront 2 was when the free demo came out. And now it'll be free again mm. for PS Plus players. This game has definitely had a huge redemption arc. It was yeah. such a disappointment when it first came out because of all the microtransactions and the community really you know, really went against this game. And I feel like um, a lot of work was put in to actually make it the game that it was supposed to be at the beginning. Um, similar to how No Man's Sky when it came out was kind of a disappointment, but they really yeah. were able to turn that around. Um, so I think it's it's cool. I think that now that this is a great game, it makes the PS Plus lineup um, even more impressive. It does. And, and one of the things that I think I always enjoyed about the Battlefront games and when I played Battlefront 2 for the first like three months that it was out before the loot boxes thing just deterred me. Uh, and I was one of those initial people to be like, I'm done. <laughs> Come out. Um, I would say this is one of those games, like it doesn't really matter if you win or lose. It's just so much fun. There's so much happening. It's a pure arcade type shooter. There's not really like a, for me, it didn't feel like there's a big significance of competition. And it was just more of just kind of like, let's just jump in and have a lot of fun and and enjoy jumping into an ATAT or ATST or, you know, turning into Luke Skywalker if you have the upgrade to be able to do it. There just there were so many factors to it that it was just like one big ride that, you know, for Kyle Almighty saying, I wish I had more time to play games. That's a game for free that you could play for 30 minutes and be like, that was great. And then go on and do whatever. It doesn't feel like you have to keep playing. I agree that it felt like a fun ride from what I remember from the demo. It was like you're in the world of Star Wars and the graphics looked great. And as someone who's a pretty casual Star Wars fan, like 
I can't name that many characters, but yeah. I still enjoy it. I thought it was very fun and you were able to like fly around in space and shoot and there are all these drones everywhere and there's all this firefight everywhere. And it was really exciting. And I agree with what you said where it wasn't like a super grindy game. Yeah. It wasn't like an, anything you really had to commit a lot of time to. It felt, I guess it felt very Disney in that it was just like, you know, have at it, have fun. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. Yeah, it felt very much like you got a theme park video game. That's really, really where it was at. Yeah. I just want to quickly recap, because I was just realizing as we were talking about this, what the PS Plus games have been this so far this year. So far this year, we've had the Uncharted Collection, the Bioshock Collection, but again, free, Uncharted 4, as a PS Plus game. Last month, we had Farming Simulator and City Skylines. And now we're getting uh, uh, potentially uh, World, War World War II and and, uh, and Battlefront 2 to that collection. Wow. If you're paying yeah. that 60 bucks a year, which I don't think, I mean, you can get it for sale for like 30 bucks a year during Black Friday. Um, hey. You know, just like low key, just like find the sales. Um, <laughs> for like, say, like even as low as, as low as like 30 bucks a year. Getting all these games. I mean, That's it sucks. A lot. It sucks you have to pay for for multiplayer still on consoles. But that being said. They give you a lot for what do you what do you pay for? They really do, and and it's that's a lot. it's worth the money. I, M- multiplayer I, should I be free. Say that. Yeah, I I would say you they're they're definitely trying to get more you know flies with honey than with vinegar, and I I really think Sony's uh, genuinely you know trying to get more consumers ready for the next gen, uh, because that that is just something that I that I think they're 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 like we we need the masses and. If you're not ready to, to upgrade, getting continually free games on PlayStation Plus is a pretty big deal. That's a big deal. Valley says they charge for multiplayer. What? Yeah, but since I play PC, I don't got to pay for that. I feel like they're doing a good, like, the PS Plus subscription seems killer. Initially, when these subscriptions came out, I was like, I have enough subscriptions I don't want to pay for another one, but these are a lot of games. These are good games. Some of these games are expensive still. I feel like this is a, this is a great deal. It really is. And it's also just kind of like the variety of games showing off what the yeah. hardware can do. Uh, and just if you're in that place of like, I don't have any money to spend, but you've been committed to a year long subscription already at like Maddie was saying price between 30 to 50 at the most you've gotten a lot of bang for your buck over one year. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of games. And what is it? Farming Simulator was in there. Bioshock, Star Wars Battlefront yeah. 2. That's a big yeah. variety. I feel like um, we've kind of talked about how this is like the kind of like the Netflix of game services where yeah. you're like, I just want to have fun, but I don't know what, and I don't want to pay a lot of money. And they're like, here you yeah. go. We got you. We, we, we got yeah. you. We got the good games. We got the good stuff. We got you covered. <laughs> but- the next game we're going to talk about is one that we were like, might be game of the year. I uh, quote unquote, Kaiser said that. Peak, I, peak you, art artistry. This is an, ex, let's just show the, let's, let's just, <laughs> just show the trailer and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll dive in. All right. Put your critics hats on. brought cars to a boat race. I can't lose him. I did it! No, it's gonna take a few more like that before it breaks. Okay, V, really you're up. It. Shielding is gone! Let me work my magic and I can take them offline for a few seconds. This yeah, isn't a streamer's voice, this is an actual down. voice actor. I can't get close These are actual fire actors. Fire. Like, you're up, Letty. from the film. Before they reset. Look at that thing. I've got something better. You take that one. Is that like a tank? That was Michelle Rodriguez. That was Vin Diesel. Here goes nothing. Wait, I'm I'm sorry. We got to go back because the, <laughs> the 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 screens here says gear up for high octane heists, and this is what but they it, show. Here goes nothing. 
like where's the where's the heist? Where's the heist part? I think they do show us safe in the second. Part. Oh my god, that was close. Now, yeah, that close. Sounds like it was really close. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I believe that was really close. Remember Rio? Use the container. Like a wrecking ball, right? <laughs> I get it. Wow. Come like get a wrecking ball, right? Remember Rio? Use the container. Now this is what I call evasive maneuver. Wow. Did you see that? Somebody wrote that and asked that. This can't be good. Be, be and this, girl, is this a new game? Is this from 2012? This game hasn't come out yet. Coming dead ahead. Next gen console contender. Side with the best crew. Let's ride. Where's the crew? We have to stop it. Oh, they're there. Tom, you're up. We can't stop the rocket from over here. Pass through the flame. Whoa, Tom, where are you going? What is he doing? What is he doing? mini game from resident resident evil 4 and also i feel like a cars video game would be more exciting to me than this okay does like anybody Pixar remember Car when all the movie video games were coming out it was like the time period from playstation and a big thing big wave like of them Xbox, Xbox 360, PlayStation 2. It was just like every new movie came out. There was a there was a new like movie game. Exactly, Kai. This is that. <laughs> if anything, we're rebooting the terrible movie video games. And we're looking at the first one right now. In the trailer, you barely saw any of the people that were just in the cars. And I don't know why to me the voice line sounded like I just got a piece of paper in my room and I was like, oh, look out for the, the car. Yeah. Like, I don't know why it was so unconvincing to me. Yeah, completely. And they've got, I mean, they've really got these actual actors and they got their mocap faces. And, I mean, they got their likenesses in there and everything, but it just felt like basically the subtext of every line read was, I'm getting a paycheck. I'm getting a paycheck. And I'm continually getting a paycheck. Cool. How's that for you guys, right? Because that's the last time I'm reading that line. Some parts did look kind of fun, but I also thought that it was like gameplay tactics that I've seen before. Like I, yeah. I've, I've seen this kind of game before. Yeah, this this is a game that you would expect to be a mini game within a bigger yes, game. Yes, exactly. This would be a great mini game. Yeah, it's like if you Classic had some open mini. world, you know, uh, Fast and the Furious game that more behaved like, you know, GTA than it did like, like Maddie said, a Spy Hunter clone. Um, and then you just nothing in here is compelling like i'll just be honest like it looks like oh wow i'm basically driving in the same one direction that i'm always going and there is some sort of car based mission to do i feel like the cars don't look that exciting to me i don't know most of these just seem like pretty normal sedans but then yeah. they like pull guns out but i'm like this doesn't look like a sports car like a cyber truck or how does the driving from GTA San Andreas look better than this? <laughs> yeah. The, and the, and the graphics look old. That's the other thing, the too. This look looks really old. Looks old. Now, question to ask. How much would you pay to play this? Maybe like $6. Kai's on the four ninety nine. Four ninety nine. How much does this game cost? I don't, I don't know if they've announced the price. I think this price. is a, a $60 game. No way! No. They want fifty nine ninety nine for this. We just said you can pay less than that and get amazing games for free from PlayStation Plus. Hashtag not sponsored, yeah. but buy it. <laughs> what? I think they're just. I think they're just banking on how international Fast and the Furious is. But this is a game that should have come out like five years ago. This should have come out five years ago. I feel like the Fast and Furious movies do really well internationally. Like, they're mm. really good movies. But I don't know if video games for franchises like that really perform well overseas. Like, who's their market? Is Are there, like, 
I don't know. Diehard Fast and Furious fans out there, I feel like most people are just like, oh, these are fun. Not like, I need all the Fast and Furious. What, what else has Slightly Mad Studios made? Oh, I don't know. I'll, I'll look that up in a sec, but it is this is available for, for pre-order for $59.99, just to confirm the uh, the price on, on the game. Save $60 and put it towards an investment of a PlayStation 5. Yes. Yeah, pocket pocket that. Yeah. Seriously, there's no there's no point. In Wait, what was the any... name? What was the name of the company again? Uh, I already forgot oh, the name because right. I've already forgot the trailer. <laughs> it was on there. Slightly Mad Studios. Thank you, Coombs. Appreciate you. What's, What's up, Faze? Boring. Slightly Mad Studios. Yeah, they done anything else that we're like, oh, okay, that's pretty good. Or is this one of those studios you're like, oh, they made that. Oh wow, they made that. You're very sure they made Forza. Really. Is that a sarcasm that I didn't pick up on? Project Cars? It looks like they made, uh, yeah, Project Cars, or worked on Project Cars in a Need for Speed Shift game. Um, they're, uh, their parent company's Codemasters, who make, like, the legit F1 eSport game that, like, great, that like drivers use for their eSport. also makes me wonder if, like, the devs were just, like, getting a paycheck, getting a paycheck. You know what I mean? Like... Yeah, was, like... I was... I was not thrilled by what I was seeing. There was nothing in that footage that was like, I have to play this game. I feel like if I had to make that video game, it would make me want to leave gaming. I feel like it's just like for the, for the paycheck, just make this game, just do your work. Like you're in any other nine to five, no yeah. creativity. Yeah. I, I, I wouldn't be, That's I wouldn't sad. be shocked. Yeah. I, I thought games like this were done. I thought I thought, I thought this I thought was like moved on. this was gone and we weren't doing this anymore. Clearly, we were wrong. And like Radio said, at least they live up to their name. At least they live up to their name. But that brings us to the end of our new show for today. Thank you so much for joining us, guys. We appreciate you so much for being here every day that you come in and you chat with us. Also, if you're watching from home and you haven't signed up, it's very easy to do. You can hit the star next to the channel when we go live so you're notified of that. And you can always interact with us as we're here sharing the news with you. But don't go anywhere. Wait, Barone, I think you should sign off every show from now on until BR Classics comes back with <laughs> thank you for joining us. Infinity Ward, bring back BR Classic. From now on, thank you so much for joining us and for the Caffeine Channel News Hour. Infinity Ward, please, for the love of God, bring back Classic videos. <laughs> Please do it, but don't go anywhere. Stay here until Infinity Ward brings back BR Classic Mode. Also, because Zand is bringing you some Star Citizen, and then I am playing some League of Legends at 5 p.m. Pacific time. So thank you so much. I am Kaisa. I am Marone. Everybody have a wonderful time with Zand and a wonderful rest of the day. We will see you tomorrow, guys. Have fun. See ya.